and I am going to be taking my canoe that I built out on a local pond. It's the first time I've taken it up here to Maine since I redid it. I've used it a few times since, but on my pond back at home in Mass. But it's actually a pretty nice canoe. I built it, I think, in 2012 for, uh, for packing into places. Because at that point in time, I was working in Grand Lake Stream. And it was pretty important to have a canoe so I could get into these little remote ponds and stuff like that to go fish and there were these small little uh, river uh, there were these small little waterways like rivers and stuff like that and I wanted to be able to pack it so I made it really light and I used it for quite a few years and what it ended up happening was I used it more as a river canoe and since it was a river canoe it got scratched up a lot on the bottom and stuff and it just wasn't holding up because I think I only used a two ounce cloth on it because I wanted that canoe very, very light. So I ended up having to re-glass it. And I did a video of me re-glassing it at one point. And I'll insert some clips from that too. And I'll send in a few clips of other things. But I don't really have any footage of me building it because I wasn't actually recording things at that time. But I think you'll like the little clips I have of me rebuilding it. decided to uh, re-strengthen, you know, the stems on both sides because uh, it was starting to wear through from base use, you know what I mean? So I just said reinforce them again, put the weave over it, and uh, one, thoroughly and I'm pouring it on. And you use a scraper to really push it into the leaves. Flattens everything out nice. So I let this dry overnight and I'm going to cut off the excess of, of the weeds. And you've got to be really careful when you're cutting this, it's extremely sharp. So now that you've seen a little bit of me refurbishing the canoe and a little bit of its early life, I think you'll understand that at one point it was a real eye catcher. It's still an eye catcher, but since I had to paint it, you have to really kind of know what you're looking at for people to come up and say something about it. I had it on my truck when I went to Upper Dam the other day and people were all gawking at it and stuff. But I had to paint the outside of it just because it was so scarified and all the wood was stained on the outside and it just looked really ugly. So I painted it and it was it looks a little, it looks quite a bit better than now that it's painted, but I'm probably gonna end up having to build one again in the future. So, I'm actually thinking maybe eh, a couple years down the road I'll build an 18-footer. This is only a 16-footer, and I basically made it for a solo canoe, because canoes are one of those things that many people just buy a boat that's too small. So, if I'm going to be going out with two people, I want a 17, 18-footer. 
that's what is really ideal for two people. So you got plenty of freeboard and stuff like that. So I might build another cedar strip canoe that's probably gonna be the 18, the 18 and a half foot white takeoff from the Gil Gilpatrick book. So I built this canoe from the Gil Gilpatrick book. He was actually my tester when I was a guide, uh, when I went for my guide license test. And it's kind of cool that I got tested by Gil Gilpatrick. He's kind of a local around here that's kind of famous in the guiding, uh, guiding circles. But anyways, he gave me my license and I decided, well, later on I had to build a canoe because they say that, well, in Grand Lake Stream they had a saying that a real main guide has to do all three of the following. Make a paddle, which I've made many paddles, then build a canoe. They're really talking about a Grand Laker, but I built this canoe, so it kind of checks the box. And the last thing I did, well, the, well, the last thing I did, I actually didn't do it, but it's one of those things that everybody says you have to do to be a real guide is ride a moose. And uh, I haven't been able to have that happen yet. Alright, so I'm just getting here, and the last time I came here was a couple years ago, and I usually would come here like the first week of June, sometimes earlier I'd come here with my father and we'd troll for salmon, but what I really want to do is I want to get out. That island over there, it's blowing pretty hefty right now, it's going to be a hard, it's going to be an easy paddle across pushing me, but the, the way back is going to probably be a little rough, but, you know, first week of June, usually there's some green drakes that hatch, and I think that maybe I can get some, get into some, it's probably unlikely, because, you know, I think it's June 10th today, so they're probably over with, but we'll see what happens out there, it'll be fun anyways, just want to get the boat out and give it a go for the day. So I've been messing around, throwing a tandem of uh, wet flies, and it hasn't been doing much. I've seen a couple rises, haven't seen much of anything. I'm gonna try doing a damselfly nymph. I'm hoping that I'll get some nice rise in action out here. I see some little blue winged olives. I saw a caddis as well, but there's only been two rises from what I've seen, and it's really hard to tell what they were going for, because there's nothing really thick on the water. Got a monster. <laughs> Something. <laughs> well, it was just a rise behind me, but I was just doing some blind casting with this damselfly nymph. I just had a whack right here. Let's see how it goes.
It seems like there's still some green drakes hatching. Yeah. I see some trout over there. I just picked up this baby salmon. Not bad. Better than nothing. Well, there really wasn't much going on in here. So, there was a couple sporadic rises. But it looks like I'm going to have to just pack it in for the night and uh, see how it goes tomorrow. Tomorrow I'm going to go get some bass, I think. I'm going to have to cross the lake. 